Hello, everybody. This is Justin from KQS, and uh, this is the start of the Metal Gear month. Yay! So, uh, what, how, well, best way to start off Metal Gear is to play Metal Gear Solid 3, the best one. So, uh, yeah, I haven't played since 2012, so pretty much since I wrote that review, like a long, 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 long time ago. So, uh, let's get started. Yes, I don't care. I don't care about my trophies being disabled. I've beaten this game so many times. I got all the, the fun stuff. Like, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I am golden, pony boy. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, east and west. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. So, uh, I'm going to try and not talk too much. I said too much is, uh, <laughs> I'll probably talk during the cutscenes. That's why the, uh, the actual, um, subtitles are on, but, um, I am just going to play the game like I usually play, but, um, I, so with Metal Gear Month for people who are new subscribers, I used to do this thing well, early early, early, early channel days in which I would literally do, um, play I, I, first year I played Metal Gear Solid 1, then Metal Gear Solid 2 and now 3. Flying over Pakistan, altitude 30,000 feet. Approaching Soviet airspace. 20 minutes to drop off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Arm main parachute. Alright. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Put out that cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. So this is what Cubans were illegal. I don't even know if they still are today. Who knows? Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. A long time ago, that used to look pretty good. Still doesn't look too bad today. I mean, like, but it, I mean, it's old PS2 game with just a little bit better textures, slightly more up res textures. I don't know. Complete. Checking oxygen supply. But um, Six minutes to drop Blue Point, the, the company who uh, ported this, uh, they did a really good job. Like, I, I think they did a stupendous job with this. Because, like, before, you couldn't actually read that Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. Like, you, you could barely make it out. And now you can. I love this song. External temperature, minus 46 degrees Celsius. I think this is one of my first, uh, video game soundtracks. But it's hype. Hype, 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 hype. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Try not to get frostbite from the wind chill. One minute to drop off. Move to the rear. Activate bailout bottle. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Ten seconds to drop off. Stand by. Status okay. All green. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Jack, I've got some important news. I think I might actually CIA skip some of the tutorial stuff, like because it's just it's just tutorial and codec screens. No, the 
virtual and it's just like hey this is how to use camouflage blah 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 it succeeds will be officially organized into a unit virtuous mission sounds like some kind of initiation ritual you know don't get cocky this isn't a training op right it kind of is so what though exactly is this wonderful mission well about two years ago a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned spaceflight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. We used a mole to get the family out first, and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. That's why you never back down. Carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the US agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were gonna get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the US or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my sight. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. 
I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in a facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. So it's just a simple uh, snatch and grab. Well, <clears throat> sorta. Yeah, just kinda. So, so if you've never played a Metal Gear game, as you can see, it's got a hell of an opening. I mean, like, I haven't even touched the controller, but honestly, I think this game sorta has a good balance of cutscene to gameplay ratio. Like, it's nothing compared to, oh gosh, up, I don't even know you're solid. Oh, I have, like, double mountains. vision. Ensure I got double so vision. Bring him back to the west. Interesting. Yeah, I hit R1 to see, see, uh, first person view. If we don't get Sokolov back before but, that weapon um, is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm, the clock is ticking. I think this one does have the best <laughs> ratio. Oh, it kind of has a, kind of a shake. Oh, well, not. I mean, cutscene to gameplay ratio opening. Because, like, which one calls point. it? Um, Metal Gear Solid 1. Helium it's just like, yo, to it. here, check it out. You're, you're here. Get up the elevator. Complete, the this one's like, the hey, we're gonna tell you all that stuff. And the Fulton Air stuff. With the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat Something Snake keeps, uh, using for a long time because uh, all the way the up to Metal Gear Solid 5 you get to a full arm can handle up to 500 pounds so you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent she's equipped with two six barrel 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons as well as two 40 millimeter machine guns Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks Indeed. even with the fuel in the reserve tank we're facing a four-hour time limit if all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Do 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 do. Yeah, it's. We're already. I've already been recording for like 15 minutes. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, I'm just like, eh. I'm not sure how I'll do this first episode. Because I can... Yep, got my dumb backpack. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, though. I might do like 40 minutes as a first episode. I don't know, I'll, 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 I'll keep, I'll keep um, recording all this stuff, just to make sure we... Get it right. Yeah. Looking all cool. Though, unfortunately, uh, I wish I could show you guys an Easter egg. So, if you start a new game, um, it asks you which Metal Gear Solid that you like, or if you've ever played one. I would actually recommend um, picking two, because you actually get like an extra cutscene. It's actually pretty. It's actually pretty funny. And that whole, uh, panty waist thing, making fun of him, Mr. Snake, actually makes a lot more sense. Yay! Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. 
From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake. Oh, if you get the right analog stick, so you can move him your around. Real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful, you might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. I don't think gotcha. that ever happens, though. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. <sighs> climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy, and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk yeah. violating... I think, I think I'll edit this the via um, actual... Um, My frequency is whatchamacallit. I'll be editing um, any I'll give you a tutorial crap. Via you need to talk the to me, um, just the normal punch. editing. I'll just let it rock okay, snake. Go and then get edit it as we go. So, first mission get our backpack. <clears throat> so, if you hit the, the right thumbstick, you get this. This is what Metal Gear Solid 3 used to look like before uh, they got a, an actual official third person camera, which is a hell of a lot better. Like, it is so much better. Like, there are moments where the this works. The this weird overhead camera. Actually I shouldn't do that. It'll probably make people sick. But life medicine. That's always a good thing to get. Even though I'm not really gonna need it. So hit triangle, hit your action button. Just walk over. Hit triangle. Haha. -ha. And we're good. Perfect. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival mm -hmm. viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. Mm -hmm. For other mm -hmm. equipped items, do, just do, do, do the same do. thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. Oh, indeed it does. You'll be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Also, a very Keep interesting an thing, if you, so you uh... So your stamina is essentially stamina, like your you food gauge, I guess you could say. So if you, you uh, actually, your if your, your stamina is super low, My only uh, you can hear your stomach growling, and so does the gun. enemy. That's right. It's been so, with its never let it drop. Always However, keep, always munch on food. Every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. 
You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and US government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really I dead. will show you that. I will so show you that to you guys to later. Just take Much later. <laughs> You mean that thing they put in my Because right now, mission? I want to try That's and be as stealthy so as possible. If you remain in a state I said of try to be as long, stealthy. Nothing will be able try. To try. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. Oh. Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure, but what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack, I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. 
A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit, a group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Okay. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. We're going to finally get to control the game. Commencing virtuous mission now. Okay, perfect. Well, not for too long. So, <clears throat> so one good thing I like about this game. So, that like this is the normal uh, original Metal Gear Solid Three, not the subsistence, not the the original camera. And the good thing about it, what I actually find really good, is so when they actually say to the north, this is north, south. West and East. So, that's always the good thing about this game. So, first things, what you gotta do, what I recommend, put on some camouflage. Camouflage. So, I, uh, if you choose Metal Gear Solid, uh, if you choose Metal Gear Solid at the beginning, you can, uh, get this weird, this, uh, Raiden Man, but... Uh, this is going to be a new game plus. As you can see, I have the infinity ammo face paint. Got Soviet Union, got a bunch of different flags. But for now, um, I have a bunch of camouflages. So these ones you do have to find on the ground. 
So yeah, you can you can dress up in a tuxedo. Uh, these are the boss camos. The boss camos do some cool stuff. Uh, they actually uh, actually might wear that a few times, just because like uh, hornets, spiders, and leeches, all those guys, they suck. Actually, I'm gonna have to remember that for later. This one is a very tough one to use because. It gives you an instant, uh, as you can see that percentage up in the upper right, that's your camo index. The higher it is, the uh, more likely you're not gonna be seen. But the biggest problem is it drains your, your stamina. Now, I can show you some fun stuff later, but for now, I probably like to go with this one. That, or uh, if you're first starting out, go with the, the leaf camo. Uh, Tiger Stripe's a good all around one as well. But um, the good thing about this is it gives you a uh, double uh, nat uh, recovery rate of your health. So if you're, if you're hurt in battle, I would recommend that. So always camouflage. And, you know, I'm going to take a bunch of this stuff out. No smoking. And I've never really cared much for the AP sensor. And then we have our... Uh, are double uh so if you beat the game you get a cool revolver well actually if you get a if you do a certain ending wink wink i'll show you guys which ending that is but if you do beat the game you get a machine gun a uh think of it like an m like a you know how they have like a sawed off shotgun think of it like a sawed off m16 with unlimited ammo so uh I'm not going to use that too often. If anything, I'm going to barely use it all just for this one part. But uh, let's get started because, God, we've... <laughs> it's already... It's 33 minutes. So I might make this like a 45-minute episode. Just to kind of like... I, I don't know. I don't, I feel, I'd feel like a dick if I did that to people. If I just like, oh, hey, 30 minutes cut or a cut at mid cut scene or something. So here's our first enemies to watch out for. And it's the uh, I think it's alligators or crocodiles. But also there's beehives. Beehives are also very scary. Don't get close to them. So uh, eh, usually under normal circumstances. Actually, we'll take the suppressor off for a second. So, shoot out the beehive. Watch out for the alligators or crocodiles. Um, sorry, croc. Got a headshot, you buddy. And that can be used for good stuff later. So. Actually, let's see if I can do a little thing. Yeah, that is quite literally... Actually, hold on. Did I pick up a grenade? Oh. I guess I did not. Sorry. Where is it? I swear you get a grenade over here. Somewhere. Maybe it's back over there. Oh, shit. Yeah. Be sure not to let the, the scary alligators hit you. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's the grenade. Um... Let's see if I can do it. Uh, for the sake of fun. Because this game is very, like, this game is extremely, I don't know, best way to think of it is lifelike. So we got our little alligator buddy. I'll wait till he opens his mouth. So, he ate the grenade. Boop. See, he blew up from the inside.
Poor little alligator. Nothing against you, buddy. So let's put that suppressor back on. Let's go the intended route. Ugh. Oh yeah, actually turn it off for a second. But you can do... Actually, where is he? Oh, there he is. So there's these little frogs here. They're called Kerotans. Uh, I think there's... If you, I think there's like 64 of them? But they make little noises when you shoot them. But if you shoot all of them, you get the stealth camouflage. Which, uh... Well, you can do it two ways. You can just not get caught the entire, entire time. Or, um... Shoot all of them. Both are hard. Very difficult to do. Though, I kind of feel like it's easier to not get seen, just essentially save scum the game. So, uh, we're all camouflaged. And there's our first enemy types. Major, I've spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK-47s and grenades. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. You can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting in which camouflage we already did. in survival We already order. did our camouflage. The uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. <laughs> if you just stand up and run around like an idiot, I just love that, like spotted. getting up, like, but if you crawl, and then just like, instead, then just like uh, running away. Being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot, and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? Okay, we got our first enemy. Um, I'll show him, I'll show you what, he, what he's like. He's pretty simple. All you gotta really do is kind of, just kind of hang here. Cause yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let him get to me. Cause I I actually want to show uh, some of the combat. Cause most of the time I'm just gonna be shooting people from afar. Do 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 do. But see, so the reason why the the normal camera doesn't work is like check this out. Like there could be a guy right there, and like I can barely see him. But with the third person camera, I can see him no problem. So he's going to come my way and uh, I'll try to show off some of the CQC stuff. Do 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 do. Come on, buddy. I'll show it to you after I subdue him. But after after this, like I'm essentially just going to be fighting him like nor like fighting like normal. So that's always the fun thing about this is just let it watching them like just being concealed. All right, let's get up. So now we throw him to the ground. I have to get better at that. So the good thing about this game is it's easier to wake these guys up now. So 
So you can aim with your gun. Let's see. There we go. You can aim. You can uh, spin around and hit the L3 button and interrogate. We won't hand over Sokolov. Answer me. Let go of me. You can push him to the ground. Make him freeze. Shoot no him way. in the butt. Oh gosh. So yeah, if you point at their crotches or their heads, they'll uh, give you stuff. See, he's already knocked out. So, yep, that's pretty much the how you see QC. You can throw him. You can throw him down for an instant KO. Whoop. Okay, that guy's over there. But uh, I generally like to use the instant KO, followed by. Let's see if I can see how good my headshots are nowadays. Not bad. And then, yeah, another guy over there. So. Oh. Yeah. I think I saw something. Oh gosh. So this is where you have to play the camo game. Hornet stripe. Huh. Guess I'm seeing things. So yeah, try not to be under. Generally, your just rule of thumb is just try not to be under. Um, like even 50, 50, it's a uh, generally a good chance they'll see you. So good news is, shit, I might make this like an hour long. I might just do the whole virtuous mission level. Cause screw this. Well, not necessarily screw this, but like, like it's already like 45 minutes already. Actually, you know what? We'll get up. We'll get up to the. Uh, we'll get up to Sokolov. I just gotta make a mental note. So, as I showed you the beehives, beehives have uh, other uh, good things to do, or uh, g other uses besides uh, just normal shit. Just like normal knocking them down. You can do. Fun stuff like this. Haha. <laughs> so we're gonna. So this is great because so there's an, there's three guys. One guy all the way back. So yeah, he's say look. He's all the bees are like ah the bees. And so uh, instead of sneaking around, I can just run up. It's like, hey guys. So I literally took out like f four guys with one bullet. And that's great. That's I think that's like one of my favorite parts of this game. It's just how creative you can be.